So, so why do we? It's still confusing, right? If we have these layers, and we have these ore clouds, and we have them that coming in, why are we still seeing them now? So the real puzzle is why don't we see comets from the inner ore cloud? Yeah. So we. The inner oort cloud seems to be only there to replenish the outer oort cloud. We never see comets coming in from the inner oort cloud. Okay. And that's a bit odd. And the reason we think this is happening is something called, da da, the Jupiter barrier. Okay. So the idea is let's say that's Jupiter, that's the Earth. Um, we're only going to see comets if they come in here somewhere. Yep. Um, but this comet is now quite safe. It's going out to one or other of the oort clouds. Um, and it never comes close Anywhere to Saturn's here. orbit. Yeah. So we're not going to see this one. There are probably trillions of comets like this, and we just never past, know. And we'd never know. But what's going to happen is, when a star passes or the galactic tide affects it, it might either raise the perihelion, in which case we'll see it even less, yep. or drop the perihelion. Yep. And the only, only when we care about it is when it drops the perihelion. Because that's when we can see it. That's yeah. right. Now, for the comets in the inner Oort cloud, they are not moved as much by tides and passing because stars. Because they're naturally closer in and held stronger. Also because their period is shorter. Exactly. It might only be a few hundred thousand years rather than millions of years, which means there's just less time for the gravity of a passing star or the tides to work on it. Yep. So what happens is the perihelion doesn't change by very much per orbit. Okay. So it might go from this. To see it, we'd have to go from here into there. Yeah. Now for the outer Oort cloud, it can jump from here to there in one go. Because it doesn't need a lot of a push and it's going to have a bigger effect by being so far out. Because they go so out and the period is so slow, that means there's lots of time for the gravity of yep. passing stars or whatever to work on it. So it can jump straight from no hope in hell of ever seeing it to, hey, long period comet in one go. Okay. So that's why we see comets from the outer Oort cloud. Presumably it was up here and then previously it was up there and then previously it was up there. And it jumped from there to there in one orbit. That's still a million years. That's right. Uh, but it can jump in to see us. But the inner Oort cloud won't do that. But the inner Oort cloud will go from there to there, maybe there to there. It'll do it step by step. So it can still get to the middle. It just might have to do it in five steps rather than one. Which still takes a lot longer, which is then still well, doing it a lot less. Well, it could, you'd think it would take longer, but of course each period of these things is shorter. Okay. So in fact, the total time is, le is not long. Okay. The trouble is, when it comes in close to Jupiter, it's going to be affected by Jupiter's gravity. Because it's spinning so long near Jupiter's orbit. So it's going to have to spend several orbits where it comes still too far away to see, but still too close to Jupiter and Saturn's Whereas orbits. the outer Oort cloud essentially does it in one big jump, so it's not as effective. Yeah. So the basic trouble is, because we've got Jupiter sitting out there, these things are going to get mangled. Okay. Uh, their orbit is going to be changed. It might change into a Halley-type comet. It might change into a Jupiter family comet, or it might get flung out altogether. Yep. So we're not going to see it as a long period comet. It's going to look like something else we'll most likely be never seen at all because it just gets flung out into deep so, space. So Jupiter essentially is wreaking havoc on these comets as they come in. This is what we call the Jupiter barrier. It's the comets from the inner Oort cloud that have to get past the doorkeeper. It's like a bar, uh, someone at the door saying, oh, you want to come in here? You're going to pass me. And Jupiter's pretty big. You don't want to fight with Jupiter. No, that's messes. right. You will always lose when you fight with Jupiter. But the comets from the outer Oort cloud, which is a tiny minority, they can just sort of sneak around the back, jump uh, past in one go, which is how we see these things. All right, so the out the outer Oort cloud goes in the back door, the inner Oort cloud gets bounced by the bouncer Jupiter. Yeah, so this is why we think, this is what makes the distinction, that we can see okay. long period comets from the outer Oort cloud because they can jump from here all the way in one go. Inner Oort cloud have to do it step by step, so they're blocked by the Jupiter barrier, which may be a good thing, yep. because comets could bombard the Earth, and if it wasn't for the Jupiter barrier, we could bombard it by an awful lot more comets than we actually do. I guess, yeah, because these would just keep going in and in and in, and there would be a lot of them. That's right. So it could be, I mean, at the moment, the risk of being destroyed by a comet is much smaller than the risk of being destroyed by a meteorite. Have we seen a comet slam into Jupiter before? We have. So comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 did hit Jupiter back in the 1990s. Okay. Um, in principle, if we can see them out here, uh, then, then we could actually pick up um, the much larger number of comets that don't make it in. Yep. Um, it's, the trouble is it's very hard to see them because they're when they're this far out, they tend not to be melting so much. Yeah, okay. Actually, I should comment, there's a puzzle here. It turns out that short period comets, sure, once they're out beyond the asteroid belt, they're not emitting tails. Long period comets still have tails even out of the orbit of Saturn. Okay. Which is a bit puzzling because it's far too cold to, to melt yeah, water. Yeah. And no one actually knows what's causing these tails. Okay. Um, one theory is it's something exotic like xenon boiling off. All right. Another idea is that maybe water is changing its crystalline structure from an amorphous to a crystalline structure or back again. Okay. And that causes things to crack and break fragments yeah. off. Okay. Um, but it's actually a big puzzle why we can see them at all out there. Um, but so 
they're presumably not coming in very much. Okay. 